Hey there, this is Gil from 8 Men Tech. I'd like to invite you to join me to an online step-by-step -step Android 12 internal training I'm hosting on Thinkific. Let's run the HeyDB shell command to access the Linux shell on our target device. We can see that we are running as a none root user because of the question mark symbol. Let's run ID. We can see that the UID is shell and it is an alias to the 2000 UID. We can also see that the GID is shell for the executing process. This process also belongs to these groups. All these are part of the discretionary access control, or DAC, that is built into the Linux kernel. When we are running the ls-l command, we can also see that Linux files and folders belong to different UIDs and GIDs. Some files and folders have question marks instead of meaningful text. We will need to ask you to see the full list of files and folders without the question marks. We can see that the init environ RC file has a root UID and a shell GID. We can also see its size and when it was last modified. Let's go over the permission slots for that file. We actually know it is a file because the first slot is empty. If it had an L, it would have been a link. The next three slots are saved for the UID, which in this case is root. The second slot is for the red permission and basically allows root to see that file's content. The third slot is for the write permission and allows root to change that content of the file. The fourth slot is for the execute permission, which allows root to execute that file. The next three slots are read, write and execute permissions for the GID, which in this example is shell. Because the sixth slot is dash instead of W, it indicates that any process with a GID of shell can't change the init environment or C file, but can read or execute it. The last three slots are for all others that are not part of the UID and the GID. For directories, the number right after the permissions slots prints out the count of the internal objects. For files, the number is always one, but for directories, the number is at least two. That is because the count includes the current directory and the parent directory, so empty directories have always two as the object count. Let's see the data directory attributes. The R permission is for seeing the list of objects in that directory. The W permission is for who can create objects in that directory. And the X permission is for who can go into that directory. Because the shell user does not have system in its group, it treated as all others by the DAC security layer. It would use the last three permission slots to allow or not allow operations. So the shell user can access the data directory, but gets a permission denied error when trying to access the directory's content. Additionally, missing a write permission would prevent all non system UIDs from creating a file in that directory. Because the data folder has all the permissions enabled for that system UID, we can SU as system. Run ID to see that the UID for the system user is 1000. We can now run the same ls command again and validate that it works. We can also create a file in that data directory. The discretionary access control is only the first step of allowing or not allowing an operation like the cat command to be invoked on a file object. The Android OS runs a security-enhanced Linux or SE Linux, which adds an additional step of security policy enforcement, known as the Mandatory Access Control or MAC. Let's go back to the shell user and run ID again. The context is part of the MAC that's defined in the Android security policy. The security context is also known as a security context label. A subject is a running process, and an object can be a file, socket or another process. Subjects and objects both carry a context label and are used to allow or not allow an access operation. The security policy is made out of many access vector rules. An access vector rule defines what kind of operations can a subject performs on an object. To see the security label for the root folder we can type ls-lz. We can see that some security labels have question marks instead of meaningful text. Let's try to ls the, the init environ rc. Well, we get a permission denied error. So we need to su as root and run the ls command again. Now we can see that the security label for the rc file is rootfs. 
We also see that the GUID for the RC file is shell. It has a read and execute permission enabled while write is disabled for the shell GID. So the discretionary access control should let us cat the RC file. Let's exit back to the shell user and try that cat command. We get another permission denied error trying to read the file. To understand why we can't cat or see the file's attribute, let's ask you so we can run the dmessage command to see the latest message buffer of the kernel. We can see the reason the ls and cat commands have failed. Both operations got an access vector cache or a VC denied error. To reduce lookup overhead, policy decisions are cached in memory via the access vector cache. When we ran the ls command, our subject context was shell and it was trying to run the get attribute operation on a file class type that is labeled as rootfs. It seems that the SE Linux policy denies access to prevent the shell from reading the RC file. This is because it is missing an allowed rule access vector. The same goes for the cat command. The shell user is not allowed to read the init RC file because it is labeled as rootfs. Let's hey db shell as s u again and run the ps dash hey z command. ps is the process status command line application. The hey flag tells ps to print all the processes. The z flag adds a security label column to each process. The security label is also known as the security context. The next column is the user, which the process is running as. Next are the process ID and parent process ID. A child process is created when a process decides to fork itself to a new process. A new process can also be created when a parent process executes a shell script or a binary application. We can see that all the Java applications have the same PPID. Scrolling up can tell us it is the Zygote process, which is the C++ native executable that starts the Java virtual machine. Zygote runs as root user with the Zygote security label. Zygote, like many other native processes, have one as the PPID. One is for the init process, which is the process that boots the Android OS. The init process also runs as root user but with the init security label. The init process is started directly by the kernel which has zero as PID. VSZ is the virtual memory size. The virtual memory has addresses allocated in the process's memory map, but these pages might not occupy any physical memory. RSS is the resident set size. The RSS accounts only for memory that is currently occupying space in the device's physical memory. Since part of the memory is shared, many processes may use it. Adding up all of the RSS values can end up with more space than the system actually has. WCHAN is the wait location in the kernel which can be useful to debug long waits. The next column is the instruction pointer address, which seems to always be zero. The next column is the process state. R is for running, S is for sleeping, and I is for idle. Let's see how apps are sandboxed by the user IDs. The settings process runs as a system user and has a security label of a system app. The gallery 3D app runs as u 0 hey 110 user which is a kernel UID of 10110. The Gallery 3D app has a security label of an untrusted app. There are other untrusted apps, but these do not have the same UIDs. We can actually see that every app is installed and runs as a unique user. The Dialer app runs as U0, Hey101 user with a private app security label. Let's navigate to the Data Data folder and list its content. The data folder in the data partition is used by different apps to access their private files. For example, the dialer app would store its databases in that folder. It might save a non-encrypted dialer DB file. But rest assured, these files are still sandboxed by the DAC as it only allows the dialer UID to access that folder. Keep in mind that because we run as root, we got full access to any folder or file.